On Tuesday, Netflix released Cat Williams' latest stand-up special, World War III. The special marks the first time we've seen an hour of comedy from Cat since 2018. However, despite the long wait in between, it seems as though the special is getting a lukewarm response from fans online. Amin Joseph says, Cat Williams, WTF is this. Another user said, I appreciate the effort Cat Williams gave on his new comedy special. I understand he's no longer in his prime. This is not Pimp Chronicles by far, but it was okay. Yesterday, Michael Blackson tweeted that stand-up comedy specials haven't been that special, and with the recent conversations surrounding Cat stand-up, leaves some people to assume who he's talking about. Today, we have our company hype analysts, Vanessa Fraction and Pierre, along with very special guests, Gail Bean, to give their thoughts and reactions. Pierre, I want to go ahead and kick it off with you. What are your reactions to some of these bad reviews we're seeing Cat Williams receive? Well, you know, after you have 10 spe plus specials, you're going to get some ups and downs. And, um, well, you know, I saw 20 minutes of it. Um, but, you know, people seeing the whole thing, you know, you see, you know, it's, it, it, the temperature is not really good. It's not exciting. People ain't really jumping up and down about it. But, again, I got to watch the other 40 minutes of it. And, you know, and I'll give you my, you know, my wholeheartedly true uh, response to it. But, again, you know, to me, he's still he's still a legend in the business. He just happened, you know, this is one he caught an L with. A lot of comics caught an L. You just can't catch too many L's. We know a couple of famous comics that had a couple of L's under their uh, belt as far as a special. All right. Well, <laughs> Vanessa, I want to kick it to you as well. What are your thoughts on some of the bad reviews we're seeing Cat Williams receive? Uh you know, it happens, you know, um, it, you're, you're each special that you do, if you will, or each hour that you provide to the community, everybody not going to receive it the same way. You know yeah. what I mean? Some people probably just slapping their knees and it was like, hey, you know what I mean? But you're not going to necessarily hear those comments, you know, um, for others, it might not have been what they expected. But then here we're going with expectations, you know what I mean? And as a creative, you just have to deliver what you have, you know what I mean? So yeah. sometimes when you're going in with an ex expectations of a pimp chronicle, when somebody's possibly no longer a pimp in anymore you right. know what I mean <laughs> you, you know then you may have some comments now I didn't see it so I can't you know speak fully on, on what had went down right. but I do know that he produces a lot of specials within a short amount of time and I and I do believe that it does take time to really curate and really you know to put that joke together in a way that's gonna hit and crush right. every single time so right. you know Absolutely. reviews are to be expected now, Gail, first and foremost, thank you so much for joining us today, especially on this conversation. I think you're going to add a lot to it. But I just want to start off. What's your reaction when you saw some of these bad reviews on his special? I mean, nobody's above constructive criticism at no point in life. Mm -hmm. So for me, this may be what is like 11, 13 special. 11, mm -hmm. 11, yeah. So an hour, if you have 11 hours and you only have one hour that's not where everything else has been, you still passed. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and then this is like post Emmy Award winning mm. Cat Williams. So mm. we don't know if he's changed as a person or what he's been through, if his schedule is way more busy or not making excuses for him. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I think in any industry, you have to continue to practice and learn mm -hmm. and grow mm -hmm. and be constructive to progress and deliver great work. Like, this I watched it says always be practicing your craft. Yeah. yeah. So at no point should I don't know if he's hit a couple of clubs, you know, practice mm -hmm. jokes, has right. a writer, what's mm. going on. Writer's but well. I mean he's gonna have to take this, receive it at face value and yeah. say, Okay, are you are you happy with the work you put out? Mm -hmm. Or do you wanna do better? Did I wonder if he left. Right. Now, speaking of perfecting your craft, I do want to um, pull up a, a clip where he did do an interview on the Arsenio Hall um, show. So I wanted to take a look at that and then I want to get you all's reaction. So let's take a look at that clip. I never see you in a club, but then you have an hour that's on fire. Do you work in your house? It got to the point where I'm asking other comedians to not do things that maybe they would want to do so i don't do any um practicing in clubs i do it all um in arenas uh, um, now pierre i want to get your reaction on this what are your thoughts about you know cat williams response to how he works on his craft do you think talents at his level need to work on their craft at this point in their career well, he, he, said, he, said, he said a couple of interesting things, but one thing I, I, I say, like, he, he came up, you know, when he did come up, when he blew up, whatever the point was that y'all figured he blew up at, he started doing arenas. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it, it, it's unnecessary for him to come down to comedy club and work on his act. If, you, if people accept him in arenas, 
trying out new stuff for the first time, then good for him, you know. Um, and he'll get critiqued about it too if it's not working, you know, if he hasn't worked on it fine enough to get to that point. But again, he has true fans. You know, you don't you don't do always arena if you don't have true fans, okay? You got to come. If your if your thing ain't hot no more, you come down to a you know arena, then to a, you know comedy theater, then a comedy club. He stays up there, and people continue to support him. And you know, ten thousand people come out to see him when he works out. If he wants to work out, ten thousand people come see him. So I ain't mad at him for doing that. Do that, brother. If that's what they want to do, you know, on our level, which is lower than his, I got to pound it through the comedy club first and get it together by the time I hit to the theater. So you know, I understand. If I, if I didn't have to go that route, I might not go that route either. Shit. Y'all catch this new stuff for for seventy five hundred dollars for this new shit, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I am not mad at it. I'm not mad at it, Vanessa. I want you to chime in on this one. What are your thoughts about you know some of the things that Cat Williams had to say? And do you think you know once you reach a certain level that you know you can alter the way that you work on your craft if you decide to work on your craft? Yes, yes, yes. I think to everything you said. Um, when I read the statement. Of course, at first I was like, well, practice makes perfect, baby. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to critique. Like, what you mean? You just try it. You don't try it out. You just put it out. Yeah. But in listening to uh, him in his entirety, um, which one should always do, yeah. uh, <laughs> I understand much fuller what he's talking about. And again, he addressed the fact, hey, my first 10, 15 years, I got it up out the dirt like everybody else. He did address, too, that to the way that he likes to do things. I don't want to be in an environment trying to tell folks, hey, don't listen to this. And now you can't talk about this because I'm going to talk about this. And I want to try my stuff out just because because he is in an elite um, situation. Um, he also uh, uh, um, said, and as Pierre mentioned, his club right now is the arena. If I'm coming to uh, see Cat Williams, I'm not coming to a club. I'm going to the arena. So, of course, yes, you might be trying some stuff out, you know what I'm saying, while you're on stage. And then he perfects it at his club, the arena at this point, and then provides um, the special for you. So it's not as if he's not practicing those things. He's just not practicing in the same places in which he used to um, practice them in. Right. You know what I mean? And that's yes. a, and it's a, a tricky thing. I was on um, tour with Bill Burr recently, and he's doing arenas. You know, that's not my normal venue, you know? And he encouraged me. He said, try some new shit out here. There's yeah. thousands of people. You're going to know if it works or not in a minute. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, it was such a confidence boost. I was like, damn, can I get another arena to try some <laughs> shit out in? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, when you're level, when you begin to level, Level up the way that you do things changes and levels up as well. And right. um, as Arsenio said, are you doing it in the basement? My husband provided a club for me in the basement. Sometimes mm -hmm. I do try my shit out in the basement. Right. So um, he addressed the fact he does practice, just not in the ways that others do. Absolutely. Now I want to bring you in on this as a working actress, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I know you mentioned Denzel Washington earlier says, you know, always perfect and work on your craft. What are your thoughts about that? Do you feel like, you know, at a certain point as an actress, you know, there may be a different way that you perfect your craft? No. Or, you know, is it is it something? something that you, you know, want to continue to do? Or how do you look at it? No, I agree with what she said. Like, sometimes it's not that he's not practicing. It just evolves. Mm -hmm. So his practicing is going to look different than another person's practicing. And listening to him say it, for him, like he said, he he doesn't want to go to clubs for whatever reasons. Like he said, he doesn't want to tell someone, don't say this joke, don't say that. You Sometimes you fear someone stealing your jokes. Mm -hmm. like, oh, that's very... Mm -hmm. It's a real thing. Yeah, yeah. common. <laughs> um, so he's just trying to protect who he is and his craft, and sometimes you're gonna hit, sometimes you miss. Mm -hmm. Like, even though Denzel says, always oh, be practicing, I ain't never seen Denzel in class. Mm. You know? So, so where does he practice? Where does right. he, you know, yeah. his practice may look a little different. Mm -hmm. His practice may be the comfort of his home with his close friends. He may try to jump out on you, and you don't even know he's trying to jump on you. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you just never know. Um, the intention was there, it seems like. Like I said, I would like to hear from him what he How he felt that. the comedy special did. And then sometimes you just don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, nobody's. Yeah. <laughs> As he's put the Steph Curry thing. He was like, shoot, your intention is to hit, but hey. You have time. people like LeBron. You got a Steph, you got a LeBron. LeBron's intention is not to hit. He don't want to go out there and just put up 30 points. He want to win. Right. Mm -hmm. He's going to be mad if he don't win. So everybody's different. Right. right? For Cat, hell, he could have won because he got paid. <laughs> So let me, let me ask win. this, and Pierre, I want to bring this to you. So um, Cat Williams made a, a comment on PC culture, and I want to read the quote, 
and then ask you a question. So he says, if these are the confines that keep you from doing the craft God put you to, then it probably ain't for you. I guess I want to bring you in on this one. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Do you think PC culture had anything to do with his latest material? I think it's in the back of all of our minds in one way or another. I don't think that it's maybe the forefront thing or the thing that you lead with. But I think somewhere back there you say, let me not say this word. Let me switch this word up. You know, yes. let me, you know, and I, I, I don't mind mindfulness. I don't mind being yeah. a little bit more thoughtful about the way you're presenting and the way, uh, it, and to do it in a way where everyone can laugh and someone's not being laughed at unless that is your intention. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's, I, I think that it has something to do with it. Not about whether it's funny or not, but I actually yeah. very much like his comment about if you can't figure out a way to do your have your craft and so forth within um, sometimes it can be rigid I will say sometimes people are very sensitive and anal so you can't always fit into that but in a way you should still very much be able to succeed um, in doing the things that you love to do so yeah I, yeah. I think it's there in some ways now Gail I want to uh, bring you on this of course so with the scripts that you received over time mm -hmm. have you seen like a shift in you know people maybe uh -huh. catering more to the PC culture are trying to stay away from certain things? And um, what has that been like yourself? I definitely have seen the scripts evolve to inclusiveness or mm -hmm. diversity or shifting or feeling its force. Like you have Fast and Furious mm -hmm. where it's just natural diversity. Mm -hmm. But then you have some things where they feel they need to add that in there in order to make it make sense. Mm -hmm. I know um, with Girls, uh, old show on HBO, it, she got all this backlash about not having no black people when it's in New York. Mm -hmm. So then she randomly like threw Donald Glover in there. Mm -hmm. um, so there's plenty of moments, and then his territory has enlarged. Like he won an Emmy, mm -hmm. so now you're see you already were a legend, but now you're seen on another platform in a different space. You have more eyes on you. Like I know people are really big on like the blue check. Like I'm so happy that my Twitter isn't verified because mm -hmm. my mouth is reckless. Now if they dig, <laughs> they dig some shit up from back right. in the day. I'm just gonna be like, I mean. That's what I was going to ask you think about PC culture when it comes to just your everyday living and the way that it may affect the jobs that you get. Uh, I do. Mm -hmm. I do think about it, but I'm mean. <laughs> so I'm like, they just going to have to get me. So I, I navigate what platforms I do step on because mm -hmm. I know not everybody can take me as who I am. Mm -hmm. And then there's some spaces where, I'm, of course, I'm going to go there. I may not curse. Um, you know, I mean, we've all really not just PC culture, but we've all kind of code switched in a sense of like growing up as a kid. I wasn't just cursing around my mm -hmm, mama. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't just fighting anywhere. Yeah. So I know how to like play the game. But it's a thing of at the end of the day, regardless of PC culture or whatever, yeah, being, being, I'm still going to be me to the yeah. core. I'm not going to do anything that like um, makes me lose my integrity or my value or my authenticity of who I am. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I definitely appreciate y'all for chiming in on this topic. Um, and again, thank you so much for joining us, Gail. Um, now, what we do before we close out, we like to go around just to see what everybody has coming up. Now, yeah. <laughs> next up, our special guest, Gail Bean, can you tell us some of the things that you have? So I'm going to do a premiere here in Atlanta for the Pea Valley Season 2 premiere. So June 3rd, I'll do a premiere. Okay. Still working on the location. The after party will be at Stroker's. Then June 4th, we're going to do an adult field day. Kids are welcome, but... They gonna have the playground and stuff to play on, but the field that we we getting real because I don't lose. Mitchells are born winners, so okay. we're gonna do an adult field day, voter registration. We gotta get some people up out of there and some people that are for us and representing us in there. And then Sunday will be workout workout stations and meditation. That'll be June fifth. So awesome. the whole weekend. Follow me, get yeah. underscore underscore bean. Coming up May 28th, I'm at um, the Apache, the new Apache here in Atlanta. So it's like a jokes and notes thing. It's jokes, it's poetry, it's music. So make sure you come out for that May 28th. Thursday, the uh, Black Music Honors. I'm doing warm-ups, uh, yeah. keeping that crowd going, giving that comedy. And then follow me at Vanessa Fraction so you can watch me on Nappy Boy Radio Podcast as well. I will be in Harris, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania with my, my comedian talent, Buck Wild and Joe Claire. You know, y'all see, um, that'll be Wednesday, the 25th of this month, and May 25th, in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Check me out there. And the following Saturday, I'll be in Shelby, North Carolina. So all my folks from North Carolina, the, the 28th on Saturday, I'll be in the place to be. I'm getting my material ready. I'm cultivating for my special that I may be shooting with somebody close by. I'm going to be shooting special. You know what I'm saying? A little micro special. Just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Not too much. But we're going to work on that material during that time. So y'all won't be coming on there talking about my shit, boo-boo, okay? Damn that. <laughs> well, I appreciate
appreciate it. I definitely look forward to all these things that are coming up. Thank you so much for sharing and calling and chiming in on this topic. But you heard from us. Now we want to hear from you in the comments below. What are your thoughts on some of the backlash that Cat Williams is receiving from his latest special? For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson.